Welcome in to the PHNX Suns Post Game Show Therapy Edition, brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Lindsay Smith here with Saul Bookman, Gerald Bourget, and Espo, and unfortunately, we got to talk about an L today because the Suns fall to the Bucks 104-101, and this one came down to the final few seconds and it sucked i hated it it's not fun <laughs> no i i usually don't do this but fuck jay crowder <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 or zero out of 10 would not recommend that was uh that was ptsd and possibly mm-hmm. every form in the worst possible way this game could have gone in terms of jay crowder hitting a pair of big corner threes book getting stripped by drew holiday down the stretch the sun's missing nine free throws in a game they lost by three um, this game had everything that was horrific. If you're a Suns fan, it was this rough. This game had everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I th- it was a fun game, except for the yes. you know the whole anxiety of it, right? Um, and listen, the, the Suns had chances down the stretch. Of course, they blew that lead, but they mm-hmm. still had chances. Devin Booker uh, is your star player right now, and he had opportunities to 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 keep them in the game. Uh, and faltered, and Shit. that's just that's basically in summary what happened. They had an opportunity at the very end when they shouldn't have had any, thanks to Joe Ingles being an idiot, and they still couldn't capitalize. I mean, a, a little bit over that shot goes in, you got a four point play to tie it. Mm. You have an opportunity to hit two free throws and then miss one to try to get a put back. You can't make two free throws if if you're Devin Booker. This was just an immensely frustrating uh, game today. The first half was ugly on both sides. The second half was fun and frustrating all at the same time. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions for you guys. Um, while we're talking about book, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first and foremost, we got a super chat from Libertarian. Thank you for your super chat. Said book needs to buy a new pair of Kobe 4 Purple Pro Tros. <laughs> Maybe it just needs to mix it up a little bit. Get some fresh uh, shoes on. Maybe that helps. There's a problem with that, though. They you can't find them. Yeah. And they're all <laughs> expensive the as all hell. Book, he owns all of book, them. Yeah, book has like a stash of them for sure. <laughs> but he needs to uh, switch them out. Uh, go ahead. So the question I had was for this game specifically, was it more about Drew Holiday and his defense or was it more about uh, Book still trying to get his legs underneath him and find that rhythm? Again? I think it's definitely a combination, especially when you look back at the first first half. I mean, Devin Booker was not good in the first half at all, mm. shooting wise. I think he was two for 10 at the half. Mm. Um, and and more importantly, I just mentioned on the last post game show how Devin Booker does a very good job of letting the game just come to him. In that first half, for whatever reason, he was really trying to force the issue to try and score. He was taking shots that were off balance, and and he, and he wasn't connecting. And sometimes you just got to let – you just got to settle down a little bit and let the game kind of flow through um, and pick and choose your spots. And uh, I think that kind of threw him off a little bit. But he's a great player, and he was able to right the ship in the second half. Um, it's just <laughs> – like I was saying, and I, I kind of said it facetiously, but there's actually a little bit of truth to it. Uh, Devin Booker versus Drew Holiday in the last 30 seconds of games. It's just, <laughs> there's just a little, it just doesn't math up. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, listen, he's going he's gonna to learn from this. He's going to move on. And uh, It was a fun game. It was a fun game. I just wish Devin Booker would have hit one more free throw for me personally <laughs> so i could have won my bet today yeah that's brutal oh look that's, I, the best part was you didn't realize it until after <laughs> one <laughs> point yeah i mean that's obviously brutal you look at the like we mentioned the suns missed nine free throws and that was the difference book missed four of the nine missed free throws tonight so you got to have those shots um i do think drew holiday that last play that was just a great individual play and as much as we want to talk about, yes, it's obviously triggering for us who have watched what happened in the finals, a, a strip from behind that Holiday had in that series. Like, Book had just scored on him the last possession with 33 seconds to go. So I, I get the concern over the play call, and especially because he started the game off cold. It's 0 for 6, 2 for 10 at half, like Saul said. He was 7 for 11 in the second half. Like, you run that play through Devin Booker. For now, he is still your number one option, and he's still worthy of being that guy. Like, that's just great individual defense, and it happens sometimes. It's just really unfortunate it happened in this particular game. It's the right call. They use the, the shooters that they now have as decoys, right? Mm-hmm. He got to the bucket 
Drew Holiday made an otherworldly defensive play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you watch, at first we thought that Book just lost the ball. They show the replay, and, and Drew Holiday gets his hand in there without committing a foul. It was a hell of a play. It's the right play call, but it does make me wonder the whole last 15 seconds of this game, 20 seconds of this game, when KD's out there, I'm thinking KD's the guy that's going to get those shots, at least uh, if if you run into this in the regular season, at least a few times. It definitely, I mean, you you got to lean that way anyway, not be, not to slight Booker for any stretch no. of the imagination, but because because KD is damn near seven foot tall, there's very few players, even if you put Drew Holiday, even if you put Giannis on him, mm-hmm. he's shown that he can burn Giannis. He's done it mm-hmm. millions of times before. Like, there's just not many people in the world that can guard Kevin Durant. Um, the same thing can't necessarily be said at that level for Devin Booker, and that's okay. Both of them are clutch. Both of them have shown the propensity to be clutch before, but Kevin Durant is just an extra, extra level of clutch uh, because of his skill sets and really his his measurables. That's that's the separator. His KD is a seven oh, foot yeah. gift from every position on the right. court. And if you go from like it doesn't even matter who's your number one because if those are your top two options that yeah. you have in the clutch, it's very different from Booker and this version of CP3 who can also hit a clutch bucket as a third option now. Like everybody moves down in the pecking order, and I think that'll make everybody better for it in the long run. And look Devin- at us staying positive <laughs> even after a <laughs> terrible loss. Look, if Devin Booker drives down there, kicks it out to. Terrence Ross or or Damian Lee and one of those two guys misses a three. We're all you're, saying you're, everybody else, else is different. still saying yep. this is the wrong play call. Exactly. Why did you do that? Right. Devin Booker needs to take yeah. the shot. Big time players mm-hmm. don't you know? pass the ball in that situation. We've heard it so many times against LeBron. Mm-hmm. Like people would have said the same thing to yeah. Booker. So it's a lose lose situation. Yeah. The, That's part of the pressure of being a great one. The, Make or miss the, league. Yeah. The the free throw shooting is the only thing I think you can legit have a gripe with Devin Booker and CP three today about that's that's where it was where it was won and lost those kind of things you you can't do that you can't shoot 59 percent from the free throw line i mean mm-hmm. you just can't do that in an nba game especially in a defense heavy game where both teams were struggling to create yeah. their own offense yeah. or knock down threes or anything because that was like playoff intensity yeah, caliber defense like it was I, I know the first half was ugly from an offensive standpoint but the defense on both ends was pretty impressive and you know that this one meant a little extra to both teams given their history so uh yeah the free throw thing looms large for sure you want to want some good news what's, what's that news? we get to do it again in two weeks march 14th here footprint center mm-hmm. sun's bucks and hopefully you're getting Giannis and kd oh finals God. preview baby and that one's going to be even more intense not just because of Giannis oh, yeah. and kd but jay's yeah. first game back in town yeah. you know that's going to yeah. be spicy oh, yeah. so speaking of jay we did spicy. get a super chat <laughs> from trevor thank you trevor for your super chat they said how we miss in free throws. Also, how we let Jay hit back-to-back threes. Book should have went for the jumper when he got by Holiday. It was working. Um, but specifically on this one, I want to talk about Jay Crowder because obviously those back-to-back threes really hurt. They stung. They um, we saw people on social media talking about, like national people, talking about how this could not have been a better game for Jay first time back against the Suns and that mm-hmm. he looks like he hasn't missed a step after playing for so long. Yeah. That and, one stings a little bit. Well, he better looks look fresh and rejuvenated. He sat out the whole season. But, um, yeah, that was tough because the Suns had an eight-point lead with just under six minutes to go. Uh, the Bucks cut it to six, and then Crowder ties it up or gets close to tying it up two. with back-to-back threes. They were down two. Um, the first one, okay, yeah, that's going to happen. The second one, there was a, a rebound, a defensive rebound the Suns could have had that would have prevented that. They didn't get it, and it ends in a Crowder three. And there were a couple of plays this game, like the Terrence Ross rebound that went off his hands at the Bucks challenge. Again, Saul, you mentioned this while we were watching. This is the second time in the last month or whatever it is that they've had opportunities to close out a game or or you know prevent a loss with a with a rebound on a free throw situation yeah. those are rebounds you just absolutely have to have and they couldn't get them let's not rewrite history on Jay Crowder in this game either you know it's real easy for i believe it was Kevin O'Connor to sit there and be like this is exactly what the bucks de-. without those two three pointers and they're huge he had one point in this game other than those two three finished with seven he had four fouls uh, all in 25 minutes 
His his defense was was okay. He wasn't world beating. So this isn't like Jay Crowder was otherworldly to beat the Suns. No. He hit two three pointers, one of which was uh, like you said, poor rebounding that left him open. And, and he did what he needed to in the situation. But Jay Crowder didn't dominate this game to give the Bucks but, the win. But that's you know it, it's the NBA, and that's how people look at it. It's not how you do it; it's when you do it. That's fair. And for him to do have two big threes after only scoring a point in about 20 minutes of play, um, and that shows – I mean, Jay's a pro. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're not going to take that away from him. He's oh, been I there, will. done that. If he had done know. it for the Suns, we would have a ring right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's been there, done that. Like, that's kind of what you expect from Jay. To be honest, when he got those wide-open threes in the corner, I was like, of course he's going to hit these. Like, that's just – I. I honestly think this is more of a Jay Crowder revenge game than if he had gone out and scored like 20, 25 points by taking a ton sure. of shots. Yeah. Because he, like you said, he didn't do much up to that point. Defensively, he was okay. The Suns were perfectly content trying to switch him onto book and CP3. Oh, yeah. they and they the went at him. him. Yep. Yeah. But then the fact that he's like the thorn in the side down the stretch that helps propel this comeback, I think that is honestly even worse than if he had come out and yeah. dropped like Emma, 20. Can I get the two shot? Uh let me just say this, Jay. Enjoy your uh, little late February uh, heroics and victory, because there's the months of March, April, May, and June where that's when we're gonna see well, who's the best and uh, where the rubber meets the road. And uh, I'm hoping it's Phoenix that comes out. Is he doing this against a team we could say, see Espo, in the finals? I'm not, um, <laughs> we need to write, write every, our check. And we're not sure we three can cash just all yet. All three of us over here were like, oh no, yeah. no, <laughs> no, no. You can enjoy this. And let's see. Let's. But let's you know that's not what you mean. Listen, at least. Well, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We've made progress because at the end of that, instead of him declaring it will be Phoenix, he said, "I'm hoping it'll be Phoenix." We've made progress. We're, we're y'all. moving in the right direction. We have made okay. progress. Let me walk you through the process. I was gonna go all in, and then uh, I went. I've learned from this. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm simply going to say, enjoy February. We still got other months, and there's a chance that the Suns uh, wind up getting the last. Hey, Jay, you know, oh just uh, from, a, from a, a piece of advice, just act like you've been there before. I didn't like say that. that. And guess what we're not going to do? What's tweet. that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please don't tweet that clip. Yeah. Oh, my God. We're now that. somebody's going to tweet it. It's if you go back and worse. watch this on YouTube, there's just going to be like a five-minute <laughs> segment that just skips yeah. randomly. Yeah. Nope, we're just going to blank it out. <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just jump <laughs> cut to the next thing. Oh, my gosh. I think after that, a good reset is probably yeah. smart. And also a beer because it's true. PM on a Sunday. Why not crack one open after that loss? Uh, might I recommend the Suns Brew from our friends over at Four Peaks? Four Peaks has fantastic options when it comes to beer, and they go hand in hand with sports. Sports are made so much better when you are enjoying a Four Peaks beverage while watching a game, whether that's a good game or a bad game, or a bad first half, a good second half, and then a heartbreaking loss at the very end. I don't know. You tell me, but Four Peaks beer will make it all better. Also, our friends over at Four Peaks will be out at the M3F Festival, March 3rd and 4th. So grab your tickets at M3FFest.com and enjoy a Wow Wheat beer while you're there. But a reminder, you do have to be 21 years or older to enjoy Four Peaks beer, and we ask that you enjoy responsibly. Also, want to tell you about our Die Hard memberships. We've talked about this a lot. Obviously, you know now that Majority of our content at gophnx.com is available for everyone. But when you are a diehard, you will get access to some premium diehard level content. Gerald put one out on the sun side of things last week. In addition to that, you also get a free shirt or hat every single year. You get 20% off our merch and our events, which the event that we're having uh, in March sold out shoot in like two days, it yeah. feels like. Yeah. The one that we're about to release on April 6th against the Nuggets. Uh, will sell out faster than yes. that for sure. And not only as a diehard do you get a discount on the events, you also get first dibs on the events too because we have a Discord channel that is only for diehards and we put all of the information in there yeah. a few hours or a day or so prior to releasing it to everyone else. So if you want to become a diehard, check it out at gophnext.com to learn more about everything that offers. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've we've done a little bit more specific conversations around this game, but let's zoom out a little bit and we'll start things off by taking a look at what's inside the box. Oh, what's in the box? Not taking, give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? Give me the
Mugs in the box is a 103. <laughs> 101 Bucks victory. So sad. I thought the offensive rebounds were going to be important. Suns won at 19 to 11. They were. They just gave guess, up a couple of crucial ones. Guess what? The uh, the defensive rebounding was what uh, cost the Suns yeah. there. Uh, Three-point shooting, Suns uh, won there. So the math was mathing in their favor. But, uh, yeah, this damn thing called free throws were quite expensive tonight. The Bucks mm. shot 71%. The Suns shot 59, and somewhere Shaq's going, well, shit. I could have outdone that. <laughs> yeah, I was I was literally about to say you can't shoot fifty nine percent for as a team from mm-hmm. the free throw line and not have a guy named Shaq on your team. Yeah. Every single one of the guys that went to the free throw line today are seventy percent, sixty five, seventy percent free throw shooters or better. The fact that they shot fifty nine percent as a team, that's really what you can point to and say, like, this is this is one of the reasons why. Sure, there was some letdowns through the game, you know, some sloppy uh, play on on rebounds and things of that nature uh but uh, free throws man that's the one thing that you know you can control no matter what and you gotta come through with that man I, yeah and especially because it wasn't like the bucks shot well from the free throw line they missed six themselves but mm-hmm. like those are things that you can control they always talk about control what you can control you got to make your free throws um it was an off night in that regard not just book like a kogi missed a pair landale missed a pair CP3 missed the one on the technical. He's missed a couple of like technical fouls like that yeah. recently. Yeah. Uh, it just okay. Sucks. Do we think that's just a one time like off night thing, or mm-hmm. what do you think the culprit is here? Because Chris Paul also missed some the other night as well. Yeah, CP3 is. I don't know. He's he has not been um, as um, automatic as he once was. I don't know why. I think it's focus. Like free throw. If this isn't like Shaq, right? When Shaq missed, you knew it was just. He was bad at it. You know, these are guys that hit them at a, you know, a, uh, almost a 90% clip on, uh, on the, on the regular. If you're missing like this, especially today, it's a mental thing. You're not, you're fo- not focused. You're in your own head somehow. Uh, I think that's what it was at the end. Booker was probably thinking too much about the one he had to miss. Probably. After the first two he had to make. Mm. And that, that just screws with your rhythm and you miss it. Like the Suns just need to focus and, and get back to it. I don't think we're going to see another 59% free throw shooting night, but even in the seventies is going to come back and bite you in the ass. Uh, in most games, this team needs to buckle down and hit and do the little things. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have no idea. I don't want to speculate as to why guys that normally make nine out of 10 of those are missing, but they're still, t- they're 12th in the NBA in free throw percentage. So like, they're not terrible. They usually hit 79% of their free throws. It was just one of those games where it really is noticeable and was, it hurts you because it was such a close, hard fought defensive battle. But I mean, I broke the state record for free throws. And then the next season I shot 75% from the free throw line. It happens. Right. <laughs> You, uh, you bought bought into the press a little too much. Or? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was reading my own clippings. You know what I mean? But then when I got to junior college, I was back up to ninety percent. So, Mr. JJ reads in the chat said it's conditioning. Do you think there's anything to just again with book coming off the injury, needing a little bit more time? Obviously, eight days off for an All Star. Yeah, it's just something like that. He, he mentioned Simple the other night that. he's still working on getting his win back, building that game conditioning to play heavier minutes because he's been on mostly a minutes restriction to this point. It's probably part of it. Um, no excuses, obviously, but tonight was the most he's played since he's returned. He played 38 minutes. I, th- I think for Ke- for for Booker, for sure, it's it's more of a rhythm thing. Mm-hmm. Just getting back into that nice flow that he was in such a good groove before he got injured. Um, he, he's just got to work back into that. So it's actually kind of nice. Honestly, it's kind of nice, and, and you know, I, I'd love to hear what everybody else thinks. Um, it's kind of nice that he's kind of going through, uh, you know, trying to figure it out right now mm-hmm. because. When he's back into his groove, he will be doing so right when KD is trying to get into the fold too. Mm-hmm. So it's like as you're trying to learn your game, you're also trying to learn KD, and you hope that those two kind of both synchronize right when you hit the playoffs so both guys are playing at a high level. They both can expect what each other's going to do instead of Book being in such a, like a great groove and then KD comes in and you know the rhythm's thrown off a little bit because now you got KD. Um, I think it's kind of a, a kind of a, a silver lining between this. Mm-hmm. 
We're finding silver linings now, All the time. I love this. Well, let's keep going down the silver lining path Mm -hmm. and maybe hand out a flower or two. Um, Because even though Devin Booker has struggled a little bit with shooting, he is still passing people on the on the leaderboards as far as records go for the Suns. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the other night on Friday, he found himself atop the three point makes list for the Suns. And tonight he has now passed Sean Marion for fourth all-time points in Suns franchise history. Mm. He is now only behind Walter Davis, Alvin Adams, and Kevin Johnson. Which, if the math is mathing, by the end of next season, he should be um, in third place and be able to pass KJ on this list. Yeah, KJ is only like 611 oh, yeah. or mm-hmm. 600 he, some points ahead. So He yeah. might pass him this year. Maybe. He, well, mm. he'd have to average like 31 20 for to 30 close games. the... Yeah, and you expect them to play at least one round, two or rounds. Playoffs well, don't playoffs count, don't count. Oh, it's they just don't. regular season. season. Yeah, That's so time score. so he'll be, he'll at the worst he'll probably he'll pass even, him start a next season at some point. I'd imagine he's got to be pretty close to being the all time playoff scorer for the Suns as well. Uh, I don't. Pro- just, I mean, he just, had the most yeah. playoff uh, most points in a player's first playoff run. Yeah, like so. Anyway, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then a few more flowers in addition to that one. Hey, D.A. and Josh Okoge, I mean, they kept us in this game in the first half. Those two had another solid game. Mm-hmm. What do you guys like that you saw from those two? Without those two, we would have been blown out by 20 in it the first half, rough. for sure. It would have been very rough. <laughs> they, uh, Josh Okoge continues to impress. I mean, he just, his effort, his energy level. And then you got throwing Tory Craig, too, because they were both good on the boards um, in the first half. Mm-hmm. Um, Tory's still struggling with, you know, to try and find some points here and there, but um, and DA was efficient as ever from uh, from the field. Um, I thought he got pushed around a little bit too much tonight um, by Brooke Lopez, who, listen, I know people are in there like, you can't get pushed around by Brooke Lopez and Drew Holiday. Those two are really good players. Mm-hmm. I know people look at flat-footed Brooke Lopez and think he's no... You know, he's like no big deal, but he is. He gives everybody problems, not just us. He's third third in the league in blocks. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like he's got the length. He's, uh, it's just, he's sneaky athletic. He just is. And Aiden had a good game. It's just Lopez did too. Like, Mm -hmm. I, I think there was that one play where he needed to get that defensive rebound that led to the second crowd or three. But like, aside from that, Aiden's offense in the first half kind of kept him afloat. And then he had that really good stretch where the Suns were targeting Jay with with Book and CP3, and they were feeding Aiton on the rolls. Um, he, I think he scored like six straight points at one point, and mm-hmm. that's when they built up, I think it was that eight-point lead that they had. Mm-hmm. So I thought he had a good night tonight. He had three blocks as well. We've been yeah. talking about we need yeah. to see more rim protection from him. Um, he was active. There were just a couple of, of lapses, a couple of plays where he didn't grab a board or where a ball went through his hands or whatever. But other than that, like... Brooke Lopez is good. He's the league's third leading shot blocker. Like CP was also throwing rifles in the first half, three yeah. feet away from that was people. A little bit of it's a like, bro, come on now. Concern in the beginning. <laughs> That's yeah. as real as I'm just a smidge. I mean, yeah, everybody, especially Josh Okogie in that first half, came through uh, and did what they could. This is, I don't, I, I get it's February. This one still, it hurts just because they should have had this. They should have broken the Bucks. 13 game winning streak even uh, you know even the, the the role players did enough for them to get this win mm. and they they just had a few of those lapses late in this game that cost them mm-hmm. and those are the kind of things that you hope you you can you can you know fix and get KD integrated and that they don't rear their heads in the playoffs because these little things are what become the big differences in those later rounds of the playoffs, you know, the Western Conference Finals, the finals, those small things, that margin of error becomes so tiny that these kind of things can cost. You know, when you see a team like the Suns today, uh, when when they start to lose the lead, um, start to feel pressed, a little herky-jerky, and things are kind of chaotic, and it seems like guys are kind of losing their focus on where they're supposed to be, that's just, that's just a, 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 a symptom of – not being in those kind of high level games against high level teams a lot this year. Um, they and they haven't, not with a full squad, right? Um, and so those are things that you kind of work through. And down the stretch, they got some key matchups, um, that are going to give them that opportunity. Plus, I'm telling you, when everybody's rattled and, and things are kind of herky jerky mm-hmm. and you get a chance to throw it to KD, mm-hmm. oh, all of a sudden things look a lot better. Yep, everybody calms down a little bit. 
People just know their role. Things smooth out. So, like, let's not overreact. Right. KD solves a lot of this issue for he, sure. He really does. And, and not even just, like, him scoring himself because we know he can score in ISO, just give him the ball and clear out. We know he can score in sets if you put him in Mikhail's spot coming off those elbow plays. He's going to be automatic. But also just the attention that he has. Yeah. Like, it's going to make things easier for Book, for CP3, and for DA especially in terms of spacing and making their jobs easier. Terrence Ross has never been had as many open three pointers as he's going to have in his career here. So um, I know that this game was rough and that you, sh you would hope that this team could beat the bucks without Giannis, but like the Suns are also missing a pretty key component. Like they're missing Kevin Durant and they, do, they didn't have Mikhail or Cam Johnson out there today to like make up for it. So see, I think that's like the, the weird little, like got to let go of that in your brain, at least for me, kind of a little bit, because I'm like, well, Sure, the Suns don't have their best player, but neither did the Bucks. Mm. So I want to see how these two teams match up without their best players. And I have full faith that my team should be able to beat the Bucks. Mm. Granted, I think the Suns probably beat themselves a little bit more in this game than mm. the Bucks beat them. Mm. But I think that's why it bothered me so much is I'm like, I would like to know, though, that my team without their best player could still beat their team without their best player. But but that's the thing is like when they've when the it's different because the Suns don't have their best player and they don't have the key players that they traded for that best player. That's so what I was like, going to say yeah. is that, so but I guys. have to remember right. how, <laughs> how much of an impact Kevin yeah. Durant has compared to the handful of guys that we sent out in that trade as well. Yeah. Like it's, it's drastically different, but because we haven't seen it yet, mm -hmm. it hasn't necessarily registered entirely. So you get a little bit of that panic. Yeah, well, you know, I was just going to say, you bring up the offensive impact that Katie's going to have. But he's also going to help on the boards. Mm -hmm. He's no slouch in rebound. He's averaging almost seven uh, this season uh, on the on the glass. So he should help clean up some of those. Uh, you know, the, sometimes it's lazy possessions where this team should get a rebound. Four guys are standing there, and an opponent mm -hmm. sneaks in because nobody's boxing out. I think Katie's going to get their head a little bit more in the game on that end too with the rebounding because he's very effective at that so hopefully it cleans up that too and, and it's another one of those small things that add up all right so i want to know because this was also a conversation that came up quite a bit today mm -hmm. if we're talking finals mm -hmm. would you rather have the bucks or the celtics mm. i just want to get to the finals <laughs> i don't really care about it. I, don't, I, don't, I, I haven't even seen a game with kd Mm. I, I need to see this. I need to see the whole thing. I have full confidence that this team could reach the finals, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I have full confidence that they could even win this championship. But I think that's a that's a that's it's a little early to think about the finals right now. It is. <laughs> I mean, it was if, a conversation if, of the day. If if we're playing out the fantasy and we're just like just talking about what we would like to see, I would love to see a rematch of this series. I think today's game was a fantastic game. Obviously, it ended horribly for our perspective but like add Kevin Durant and Giannis to that equation that has the makings of an all-time great finals yeah. um, with really awesome star performances on both sides uh, there's the revenge component there's the Jay Crowder storyline like you would not be hurting for a reason to watch that series Gerald I never like you to catch strays and I really hate for you to you do literally sent a stray in the, the pregame I know show. that's the joke here <laughs> uh, but I don't care if it's a good finals. Like all I care about is the Suns winning. And I, I think the Celtics are the group I'd rather go up against because there's no bona fide superstar on that roster. Giannis is a top five NBA player. Wait, on the not, Celtics? On the Celtics. <laughs> I, is Jason Tatum a top top five NBA player? He's close, but is, that what, we're is that what player. we're defining bona fide superstar <laughs> as? Because then the Suns don't have one either. Or Kevin they, Durant. Kevin Durant but. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's no da denying Giannis is, is a top five, probably top three guy okay. in this league right now. Mm. We saw the last time these two teams went against each other in the finals that having that guy can be the difference between hoisting the trophy and not. And that Bucks team has won a title with that group. I'd rather go against the Celtics who haven't won it, who don't have the Giannis in the room, because you could argue even with KD that the Bucks still have the best player in the series with, with yeah. Giannis. Yeah. If you have KD 
You can't argue that if you're the Celtics. I'm sorry. Jason Tatum's very good. Top 10, top 15 guy. He's not better than Kevin Durant. So mm. I want the best guy on the court in the finals. That's why Oof. I'd want to go against the Celtics. Well, that's fair. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like likelihood of Suns winning. I was just answering the question as far as what I would like to see. If we're talking about who the Suns match up better with, it might be the Celtics at this point just because – like you're saying, in a playoff series, sometimes it just, as we know firsthand from the finals a couple years ago, sometimes it just comes down to who has the best <laughs> player, um, and that could matter in a matchup like that. I, If I have to choose, <laughs> um, I agree the Celtics would be the easier path, in my opinion, but I would much rather play the Bucks because um, I just think, listen, that six-game series, even though we lost, every game was was pretty good it mm -hmm. was intense like you were into it like and i know even if we swept whoever we played in the finals it would be fun but i i do like the thought of Giannis versus kd mm -hmm. book against drew holiday you know cp against uh, middleton like i love those matchups and it would be fun and it'd be fun to get revenge because i do feel like Giannis is going to be around for quite a while and, um, you know, I want to get the best of them. If I'm a straight basketball fan, it's Suns Bucks that I want. If yeah. I'm not, if I'm taking the, I want the title, I want the easy path, or easier, not easy. Do not, <laughs> the Celtics are not easy. Yeah. Easier path. Uh, but if I'm just an NBA fan that wants a good finals, you're both right in that. This would be the 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 epic matchup uh, between these two groups. But also, Jason Tatum is definitely a superstar. I don't, I don't, I did not agree with that. <laughs> he's, he's a top five guy in this league. I say he's top seven. I still, Giannis is a better player than. Oh yeah, than him. That, but that, so but, that, but that, but that, that was the point that, I was trying to get. Yeah, to. yeah, but that, yeah. The upper echelon. I mean, Tatum's pretty team. close to a top five player. I sure. think he and Book are pretty close. Well, I think it's fair to be split on this one, whether it's from a basketball perspective or just personally what you would rather see, because mm. the chat is also split on this one. Mm. It has toggled between right now. It's currently 47 percent Bucks, 53 percent Celtics. But it's pretty much been see again, 48 now, 52. Yeah, it's within five points of 50 percent. Mm. So everyone's kind of a toss up at this yeah. point. But I just wanted to do that fun little exercise because. We were having the conversation on Twitter, so why not bring it over here to I the just, show? I just want to get into the first round with home court advantage, and then after they win that, we can worry about the second round <laughs> and then the Western <laughs> Cup. Let's, we've learned let's not put our eggs in, in, in a basket that we haven't even purchased yet. Yeah. Yeah. I said, who would you rather not? Who are we going to? Okay, yeah. we're, we're yeah. not putting eggs who, too far anywhere in any basket. <laughs> Even though Easter is, is coming up and eggs are already on the shelves, yeah. but I digress. I mean, I still think the Sixers are going to make it to the final, so. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, they're not bad. But then Ryan did say, how about the Sixers at the finals? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not. Like, the top four teams in the East are all really good, yeah. and any of them could make some noise. So I, I won't rule it out because, like, Joel Embiid could have – a fantastic series. I think with the Sixers, there's a lot more skepticism because of the Harden in the playoffs component, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Give me the New York Knicks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and name our DraftKings king of the game for this one. Tonight, we are going to give it to DeAndre Ayton. That's right. DA finished with 22 points, 11 rebounds. He was 11 of 21 from the field. And as you guys mentioned earlier, those three blocks – were big time. So congratulations to DA for being our draft king, king of the game. Unfortunately for all of us here at uh, PHNX Suns show, at least today, we didn't do very well in the DraftKings Sportsbook app. We got let down majorly, all three of us, a lost hour of bets on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, mostly because the Suns lost. That was a big one. I mean, as well, yours was a swing and a miss anyway, but... Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I took it because if it hit, I I was a runaway leader in this competition. Right this now. is fair, so. but Josh Okogie first field goal was a swing. Yeah, for sure. That was a swing I love the swings. Phantom, though. You I'm going to keep rooting for him. I, I'm so. Definitely you should root for again, him. I think you should take this bet again on Wednesday. Devin Booker hits the first one of the... If he hits one, the first two free throws of that last three free throw set, mm -hmm. I win my bet. Yep. But 
fuckity fuck yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, and if DeAndre Ayton dished five more assists in this game, I would have won a plus 18,000 bet. Not the same. Not the same. Not the same. Which means we <laughs> all lost $10. And so now the leaderboard is still in the same order, but we're all $10 up poor on this one. Hopefully, we'll be better. On Wednesday, if you guys want to get in on the action on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, be sure to download it right now. But make sure you sign up with that promo code PHNX because new customers who use that promo code can bet $5 on the NBA and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Again, with that code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Also want to tell you guys about our friends over at Octane Raceway and Mavericks because spring training, it's here and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone in the Valley. And if you are looking for something fun to do this spring training at Octane Raceway and Mavericks, they have a slew of options, right? Kart racing, virtual reality, laser tag, axe throwing, bowling, arcades, great food and great drinks and They've got an exclusive deal for you. So if you bring in your spring training ticket stub, you're going to get a free $10 game card at OctaneRaceway.com or Mavericks.com to learn more. So you can enjoy all of those things I just listed as well as get a little bit of a perk. And it's the best way, especially if you're out in Scottsdale, right? Because they're literally right across Mm -hmm. from each other. Mm -hmm. You can go to a spring training game, have a blast there, and then... Finish your evening over at Octane Wasteway Mavericks. So be sure to check them out. Here's your pro tip. Don't wait until until after. If you're going out to Salt River Fields, stop at Octane or Mavericks first. Get your better priced food, which tastes so much better than the ballpark. Get your better priced drinks and go in happy and full when you go to the baseball game and save yourself some money by heading over there. That's my pro tip. Actually, that's a good idea, Espo. That's a good idea. I know. They don't happen very often, but sometimes I provide them. There you go. Well, you started the week off with one, so (laughs) proud of you. (laughs) It was a a good way to rebound after the first two kind of shocking things you said on the show. All right. So we (laughs) have a couple of super chats to get to. First one we'll answer or talk about is from Trevor. Real quick, can I make everybody feel pretty good right now? Sure. Sure. (laughs) The Lakers are getting mollywopped by like 30 Yeah, but you got to imagine who it's to. That doesn't make me feel any better. It's to the man. It doesn't matter. It does. Luca and Kyrie have 23 of the 48 right now. If we as Suns people can't enjoy the Lakers being I mean, down what by are we 27 doing in the first you know, half, let's, we need what to are we doing? I can't enjoy anything anymore, all <laughs> right? That's a, that, seems, need, that sounds like a youth thing. <laughs> I need to understand what's happened over the last handful of days because how many games now have we been like, oh my God, did you see that score? Yeah. The NBA's like, what's drunk. What's going on? The NBA's drunk right now. I think yeah. in this case, there was, a, there was an analyst maybe on ESPN that had said they have the Mavs or the Lakers going further into the playoffs yeah, than the, the Mavs, Mavs. Yeah. even though they're screaming in, a yeah it was screaming even a. though they're 13th in the West yeah, and now they're geez. getting uh destroyed by that same Mavs team so maybe some bulletin board material there I don't know for someone I don't know we'll see all right back to the super chats first one from Trevor thank you Trevor for your super chat said it's winning time now can't afford too many losses true agreed I agree with that um but I, that leads to another topic we can talk about in a little bit. But I am curious because it's come up a lot about Just the rotations right we can do right now. Yeah. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on the rotations and the TJ Warren thing and the all bench lineups that we've been seeing because people are really upset about this right now. And I, I have my own opinions, but I wanted to get yours first. So my opinion on the rotations today, I didn't have a big problem with the rotations. I had a bigger problem in the first half than I did in the second half. But in the second half, the bench unit did very, very well. Mm-hmm. Like, they did very well. Jock played phenomenal off the bench. Terrence Ross had a good game off the bench in the second half. Like, they they played um, w- with uh, assertiveness and efficiency. Um, and they were a big reason why they extended their lead up to where it was. So... I'm, I was I was okay with the rotations, um, and I also think that the bigger picture is is how does this fit this team look with KD? What are the pieces that you're trying to put in place to uh, to be accessories at a high level to KD? And I'm sorry, TJ Warren is a scorer. Okay, mm-hmm. 
He's he's not a, like an elite three point shooter. He's a good three point shooter, not not terrible, but his game doesn't really fit what the Suns are trying to do uh, by uh, in large. Like KD, Book, CP3, DA, all mid range shooters. You throw TJ Warren in the mix. Where is he going to get the ball? What what positions are you really setting him up to for for success in? Terrence Ross, much better spot up shooter. Uh, you know, athletically, he's 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 pretty good defensively. I know he's had some issues, but he had a really good game last game, and 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 this game, I didn't think he was egregious in the second half. Um, so I, I see what Monty's trying to do. I don't think it's, I don't think it was awful. Look, I agree with the all bench lineups, and if we see more of those once Katie's in the lineup, I think that might be problematic because why are you playing him if you're not going to do it in the playoffs? Let's get to what you're actually going to do in the playoffs and spend the next 19 games figuring that out and solidifying that, right? Get people comfortable in what their role is going to be. We're past that point in the season where you're playing guys that you usually wouldn't play in your rotation because, well, it it's, it's early in the year. No, we're into lock it down. It's March this week. Get your rotations tight. I don't need to see all bench lineup. Uh, I agree with you on TJ Warren with, He makes no sense with the starting lineup. With the bench right now, you've got guys like uh, Terrence Ross that are taking those minutes. Damian Lee still getting minutes. I don't know who who loses their minutes to give TJ Warren minutes right now. I don't know. Everyone is everyone is bringing up Ish Wainwright, who played Mm -hmm. the most minutes off the bench today, eighteen minutes. But it's not like Ish was bad. He had five points, four rebounds, made one of his two three pointers. Um, I. I don't know about leading the the bench unit in minutes. I think that might be a little bit much. Um, and and I'm someone that is well versed in issues like background story. Um, I wrote about it over at GoPHNX. Uh, if you want to check that out, because he he really had to grind to get to this point, and he has earned it. If you ask anybody on this team, they will tell you he's earned these opportunities that he's getting. Um, but I do think, especially in a game like today, there might have been room for. Okay, let's see if TJ Warren can get us a couple of buckets because we need some individual offense. But like I for me, the 10 man rotation that they're doing right now, like like you're saying, I don't need to see Darius Baisley out there right now if he's not going to be part of your playoff rotation. I'd rather see you experimenting with different things. And especially before Kevin Durant comes back, hopefully Wednesday, you need to evaluate these bench guys as much as you can to figure out, all right. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant's coming back. Who's going to get out of that? I'm, I'm assuming it's it'll probably be Ish that's cut from that grouping. But, like, I, I they're not going to do all bench lineups in the playoffs, no, guys. No, like, everyone's no. freaking out like this is going to be a thing. No, no, no. You are always going to stagger at least one of your core four guys at all times. They're going to be playing upwards of 38 to 45 minutes a night. Like, I know that wins are important right now, but... More important is figuring out who is going to be part of your eight to nine man rotation, giving them opportunities to show what they can do. Um, and wins are secondary. Once you have this team fully healthy, like seeding doesn't matter as much as locking that stuff in. The only thing about seeding that matters is not falling out of the top six. Right. You don't want to have to fall into the play and bullshit and have to deal with that. Otherwise, none of the rest of it matters to me all that much with the seeding. But if you were going to, if TJ Warren were a big part of your plan, you wouldn't have re-signed Ish. You wouldn't have signed Ish Wainwright to a full contract if you're. You would have just played TJ Warren those minutes and saved the roster spot. And since in, in case something came up, you committed to uh, to Ish. You gave him that two year deal. He they like what he's doing, so of course he's going to continue to get minutes. I mean that's just right now what it is and i think you're right when when kd comes in here tory craig slides to the bench you probably see very little of ish Mm -hmm. i mean that's just the reality of it and then when it comes to baisley though because they're even regardless of what you guys are saying about not needing to see baisley personally for yourselves there's a lot of people who do and i understand the idea of just wanting to see what you have Mm. for at least one game just so that you can get it out of your system. This team is going to be so dominant but that by the time they play some of the scrub teams that they have to play down the stretch, there'll be opportunities for minutes for, for some of these guys to kind of see what they can do and stuff like that if they're still on the roster. Again, like 
We haven't solidified anything. I think the deadline's coming up, right, to solidify your, your roster. March for... 1st is the buyout deadline in, in terms of signing guys. Yeah, so, so yeah. you have a couple days, and, you know, I know there's been other players rumored, like like Derrick Rose and stuff like that. I mean, if that was going to happen, you would expect that to happen within the next two days because it has to. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. They just have to be bought out by the 1st. You can sign them after. I think it's like that. March 5th. Yeah. or something so, like that. So we oh, got a little I bit forget more when time. the actual. Gotcha. But you're still coming. I don't think. I think this team is done making moves. I Same. I would be surprised if they cut like a Jock Landell or a Darius Baisley at this point. Um, and and I understand like because we were talking about this before the show, Lynn's Like I'm curious to see what Darius Baisley has, but it's more of a like professional curiosity just to see what he can do. I don't think like if they're. If they're convinced he's not going to be part of the playoff rotation, there's no point in throwing him out there. And look, he's a great defender, but offensively he plays more like a wing, and they are fully stocked in that regard. He's not a pick-and-roll big, which is what you would need him to be with that bench unit. And like to be honest, I, I just don't see the value in throwing. The other thing that other people are forgetting is like Monty brings this up all the time when it talk when he's asked about why this new guy isn't getting minutes or this guy isn't because it takes time to get their verbiage down and their defensive coverages down, and that's a huge sticking point with him. It's why we've seen certain guys come here and not get minutes. Um, and Terrence Ross, it's why he kind of stuck out like a sore thumb in the first half with some of the defensive coverages. He was missing because it's a lot to take in as a new guy and to learn on the fly. Um, and the defense is a huge component. So that's part of why Ish Wainwright is getting minutes over TJ Warren, who's never been a great defender. It's probably because of that. Well, does anybody even think twice about TJ Warren if he hadn't been here before? Probably I not. I feel like this is because people are familiar with him in part that it's, well, why isn't TJ getting minutes? TJ can hit shots. But what they forget is this is a guy that missed – a majority of two years before this, like mm. yeah, the, yeah, and, and but doesn't things. matter. But, but he was he was playing fairly well this year until he got hurt. You know, like I mean, and he was he was good last year for the Pacers. He didn't play last. I year. mean, two years ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I I think it wouldn't be as vocal for sure if yeah. he didn't play for the Suns. But I do think because he was shooting 50 percent, because he's got that mid range game, because he can score and was contributing on a on the fourth best team in the West or in the East at the time. I, I get the questions, but I think I don't I'm not saying this is right, but I think Monty's reasoning is like he doesn't know our defense and he's always kind of been finicky about guys that create oh, their own shots true. like that unless they're a superstar guy or Landry Shamit. All right. Our next super <laughs> chat comes from HM. HM uh, said campaign had a bad turnover that led to a Juru three. Now, HM is not the only person in the chat today that has brought up campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys feel? Obviously, he only played eight minutes out there tonight. He had two points and three rebounds. But there's going to be a learning curve with campaign, right? A, a reconditioning curve, getting back into the swing of things kind of curve. It's a, He's missed 21 games. Hold on. It's a conditioning curve for fans. They got to remember, this is campaign. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to get a game like he had in his first game back. And then... You'll uh, in in the next three or four, you're gonna get a game like today. This is who campaign is. Let's not act like he's he's a guy that's always been Mister Consistency. He's he's an inconsistent guy who will have flashes and will be an energy guy for you. So I'm not I'm not shocked by this, but yeah, it is his second game back from injury as well. So keep that in mind as well. I I think we need to adjust to the idea that these. First couple of games over the next few weeks, they might be a little rust. There might be rust involved, like <laughs> Devin Booker coming off injury, campaign coming off injury, Kevin Durant even coming off injury. They have a bunch of new guys to integrate. Like it's not gonna look pretty. You hope that talent strings enough wins up so that they can move up the standings. Um, but yeah, like he <laughs> he was one for seven, a minus eight in eight minutes. Like it, it was a rough game for him, but hopefully he'll be a little more consistent moving forward. Adjustment is going to be uh, something everybody's going to have to get used to for the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, there's going to be a lot of inconsistencies because Monty is going to test certain things, certain certain roles, uh, certain rotations out because he has to. Like, you got to figure out what the best uh, group of people you have on the court at any given time is, and you can only do that if you throw them out there together. Some guys play terribly with others. Some guys gel perfectly with others. Like, mm -hmm. You're going to have to figure that all out, um, and it's going to take a little bit of time, and um, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And campaign's going to be fine. He's a backup point guard. He played eight minutes tonight because he wasn't ready for a game like this. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, there's still 20 
what, 23 more, more games left? Mm. So what I'm hearing from you guys right now as far as talking about returning from injury and all the curves that we have to uh, prepare ourselves for is that I'm not mentally prepared for when Kevin Durant comes back then. <laughs> because in my head, it's like, oh, KD plays. We're off oh, to the races. Oh, hold on. The it's all rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. The curve's and y'all are a little different here? for Katie. Y'all are here telling me that I also have to have a curve for him, too? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not prepared. You that. I'm not prepared. He's been out for like six, seven weeks. Which means on been. Wednesday, I'm going to have a full on meltdown if we lose. Okay, yeah. but we better not fucking lose. Well, the, the, the Hornets? Yeah, yeah I'd have I know. a full on meltdown, too. A Katie curve is he scores 22 and grabs six rebounds, and you're like, right. All right, he wasn't KD tonight, but we'll take it, right? There are levels to that curve. Get, get ready <laughs> get ready for some Buscemi's. We're going to have some ugly wins that, in the next couple of weeks. And ugly okay. wins, fine. Ugly losses, I can't yeah, handle at this as long, point. As long as you're winning. Like, the curve is much higher for KD, obviously. But um, <laughs> can we... I'm, I'm surprised how much hate we're seeing for Jock Landale in the chat. Ah, he had seven I, points, eight rebounds in a block in 12 minutes. He was like, he a three-pointer. Three. He was like, solid tonight. He was really solid tonight. He was. I didn't have any problem with Jock well, tonight Hold on, but... This is how erratic our chat is. Some of the girthling said he played better than DA, and other guys are like, "Why is Jock on this roster?" Like, <laughs> what so, does Jock? That's do? fair. Yeah. yeah, I mean, take that's that, fair. take it with a grain of salt, yeah. and as many levels as you want with it. All right. I think they're just mad. They're just mad because he hasn't been on the show. Enough. Everybody was mad from the moment this yeah. game tipped off at 11 yeah. a.m. I was mad. In the, in the first half. I was mad. In the first half, I literally had a conversation going on behind me that represented exactly what was going on on Twitter, <laughs> and I wanted no part of it. Yes. Which okay. is crazy. Let's just be clear. Half of Sun's Twitter was probably hungover still yeah. from last night. <laughs> probably. And we're, we're grouchy, and it's all right, because it was an 11 a.m. game. All right? Yeah. I think the NBA should completely get rid of matinees. No, I love it. I like matinees if it's two Eastern Conference teams that, that haven't had to travel. Like you're sending a team from the West to a different time zone and they're having to play at a, a 12 in the afternoon after traveling. Like it's stupid. I, I thought it was fine. Did not. It was that. a great game. Yeah. It was entertaining. Okay, the first half showed that this was a weird time yeah, for the, a game to Yes, start. and also I think the amount of Chaos on Twitter also showed that this well, is a weird time. You, can always you can't throw <laughs> basketball at us this early in the morning. We're not mentally a, prepared. Has there ever been a Suns game where there wasn't chaos on Twitter? But today was right exceptionally Lindsay. It was exceptionally sassy. spicy. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, Linda, Linda. No. Yeah, I you can log out of Twitter, though. That's the thing. I can't. Yeah, I was also a <laughs> yes, part of can. it. I was also I mean, a part of it. Can, but That's what I'm saying. It's not just Twitter. It's the matinee. It's the early start that did it. Fine. But, Jerry, I'm, <laughs> I'm It's literally you, my you, job to be you, on Twitter during the game. And, so and like. I, you report to me. I'm telling you, you can log out of Twitter for once. That's yeah. just yeah. saying it's you bad. can take a break. That's, that's not how You are about your mental health. to have an no. off day. <laughs> All right, uh, and then we have one final super chat from Submerged Sun Sun. Thank you for your super chat. They said, "Hey crew, I met you guys at the January live show from Four Peaks, and expressed oh, yeah. how you guys saved my life. Hard game to lose, but I'm looking forward to seeing KD play and hitting a takeover." That is fucking dope. Welcome to we the family, yeah, Submerged Suns fans, mm -hmm. officially as a yeah. diehard. Yeah, anyway, guy, my guy is a is a, a deep water diver. Yeah, that's what his job is. It's, it's pretty cool, super cool, yeah. but real sketchy. That, that's the submerged. Real sketchy. Real sketchy. Like you don't think that would be so scary? He's not robbing people under the water. <laughs> he's, no, he's deep he, diving he, in those canals. It's so sketchy. <laughs> you're not. You're gonna money, tell you. me that it's not sketchy going like scuba diving? I don't think you know what, what the word what sketchy means. I think you're using sketchy. Of scuba diving, not him. You mean you for guys like are you? Outrageous! <laughs> My God! <laughs> you see what happens when it's early he's in the a, morning? They don't use their brains. I didn't say shit. Don't let me sketch. in with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, God, I'm not even having a conversation I get what you're with saying. you right now. It is. I quit. We're yeah. almost done. I'm not even doing it. It is. I quit. <laughs> are you saying but, hey, scuba diving is suspect? Can, can, is that what you're saying? I, it's dangerous. Like is it's that what you're scary. trying to do? Yes. Scuba diving is scary, and it's okay. 
<laughs> you guys couldn't put two and two together? Well, uh, right. Stop yeah, lumping me in on this. Are you new to this show? Do we ever give anybody a pass for saying something like that? No. Can we I, knew what you meant, but we had to give it to you a little bit. Can I Can I reset this a little bit? Can I reset this a little bit? No, sorry. I, no, no, no. no. I just, just want to fight I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, this, is, this is real. This is real, okay? Uh-huh. So his comment in the chat talked mm-hmm. about how um, like we saved his life, which... I appreciate him saying that, but you know, obviously, there's a lot more that goes into to somebody's individual struggles, and <laughs> I appreciate the the message and really the story that he told us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We we're at the game watch. Yeah. We got a similar message on the PHNX Cardinals show too, um, and I think sometimes we don't realize the impact that we all have, like the people on in the community yeah. on each other. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have said that they, even in a loss, they look forward to coming to the show. Because it's just kind of an escape, and it's it's we try to be humorous a little bit uh, while also breaking down the game. And I appreciate everybody out there. We all do, um, especially when you guys open up and share a story like that. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, uh, we do not take that lightly, and uh, we appreciate you guys yeah. all coming aboard. And and Lindsay wasn't calling you sketch. That's right. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Espo. Everyone with half a brain would get that. Can we go up to Hello's previous comment here? Oh. Hello got it right. Lindsay thinks drug deals go down. <laughs> Hello got it right the second time where he, they said the Lindsay is the weird aunt that says, don't go in the water. It's sketchy, sketchy in there. You know how many bodies are at the bottom of bodies of water? Do don't, you know how many? Not, we literally of, found some this last yeah. year when the drought oh, was happening. Yeah, but, but don't Lindsay, go into Happy Town Lake. It's not the deep sea divers that wind up being the ones that are down there. No, you got, you got to practice. <laughs> So you'll run into them, Practice and it's in scary Town to Lake. run into them. You guys are the worst. I, I mean, low-key, if you were an underwater diver and all of a sudden you like turn and you were like swimming and you just saw a body there, would you not freak the fuck out? Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, Submerge corrected us, by the way. He's a scuba instructor and has been to 110 feet, though. So uh, I guess it doesn't qualify as deep sea diving, but uh, are swimming pools that are super deep sketch? I mean, listen, when I go to the bottom of a swimming pool, it makes my head hurt, so anything beyond seven feet is deep for me. Oh, man. Lord, have mercy. All right. Oh. Let me uh, reset this for five seconds and uh, tell you guys about our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog does daily fantasy sports differently, and they are so much fun because you can commit to a full season if that's your thing. Or you can only commit to one evening or a week or a couple days here and there. She's making this sound like a relationship. You can either commit long term or to one (laughs) night or a week. Options are necessities. Like who doesn't love multiple like options, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. True. It's the best thing about Underdog Fantasy. And it's really easy to get started. (laughs) Just go to underdogfantasy.com, download the app, and make sure you sign up with that promo code PHNX because when you use that promo code, Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. Yes, that is promo code PHNX for up to $100 back when you get started on the Underdog Fantasy app. My favorite thing is the pickums because it's so simple. It's higher or lower. And the more legs you add, the more money you can potentially win. So make sure you guys check it out. Well, uh, something I was checked out for was my Brad Birdie merch the other day. Uh, I actually wore it when I was getting my eyes checked and somebody was like, oh, Bad Birdie, I love that shirt. And I was like, oh, yeah, thank you. So if you want to get complimented, you should go to Bad Birdie too and get all your discounts at 15% by using promo code PHNXBB15. They just dropped six new polos, uh, I think three new quarter zips. They got a whole bunch of great merchandise uh, and it's all colorful. It's all, it, it separates you from the crowd. So next time you go golfing with the buds, uh, make sure you grab some and check it out today. If you want to look as hot as Bookman, Bad Birdie. <laughs> it would have worked out better if he was wearing the Bad Birdie today. You wore it on I was Friday, though. I on Friday because I thought you the read was on Friday. You wore Friday. it on Friday. And so, lesson learned, always wear Bad Birdie. Always wear Bad Birdie. <laughs> then you'll be comfortable all the time. You'll get compliments like Saul was saying. And you'll be prepared for any time you have to talk about Bad Birdie. Mm-hmm. It's like a win-win all Anybody around. Anybody else see that latest hello comment? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hello. Roman ad read, quote, it gets sketchy in the water. Be prepared. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, Don't gentlemen. forget a towel. <laughs> no. <clears throat> no. 
I was going to ask if you had final thoughts, but now I'm not. Don't We're going to go ahead and just say Don't goodbye after that one. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you as always. We will be off tomorrow, so no show, but we will have a show on Tuesday at 3 p.m., so plan to come hang out with us then. Until we see you next time, you can follow the show on Twitter at phnx underscore sons. You can follow me at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Saul at Saul underscore Bookman. You can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. And of course, you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. In a world made 70% of water, everything's sketch. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> Tell the Phoenix Metro, Megas in control, and he ain't never gonna let go. PH and X though, Lindsey Gerald Espo. Saw past the ball, we here to turn up the tempo. Got to understand me, I'll always rep the family. Rally in the valley like Dan G, no plan B, always on the job.